This episode of Out of Spec Reviews is brought to you by Magna. More on that later. Hey, welcome back to another Out of Spec Reviews video. Welcome to the inside of the i4 M50, the BMW all electric sports sedan with the new iDrive 8 system. This is a video dedicated on the deep dive of iDrive 8. Now, iDrive has always been BMW's nomenclature for their infotainment systems uh, for I think 15, 16, 17 years now, a while. So this is basically number eight. Um, and it was introduced with the iX just uh, last year. So it's fresh, new, wanted to take a deep dive, show you all around it, all the intricacies and features. So join me as I tell you everything you need to know about iDrive 8, how to use it. Let's get it fired up, shall we? Nice blue start stop, met with a sound from Hans Zimmer, which is glorious. And first things first, <laughs> be responsible. Okay. There we go. So everything has popping up now. You got your navigation. So this is the home screen basically, full of widgets as they call it. So basically everything from map, media, radar, weather is still loading. Um, it's usually quite snappy, not always, um, but right now, yeah, everything's still kind of firing up and loading. You can add more widgets, of course, uh, which would include like a map, or sorry, <laughs> a clock or calendar, personal assistant, telephone, traffic conditions in the area. And at any time, you can always go back home to the original starting point. Press and hold to adjust these sorts of things. So I'm actually gonna remove that one. Remove that one, just keep it pretty simple for now. Weather is pretty good, uh, knows your location, although when you click on it, at least, and it's, it's apparently a software bug, when you click on it, it just says current weather in nothing. It, the, the city name is just suddenly gone. Um, so hopefully they get that sorted out, but you can change locations, read the weather out loud. Um, yeah, see the local weather, it's great. Can't, can't get enough of that. Uh, and then you have media, telephone, and nav over here. We will get into those individually because I'm going to go to the menu. So here we go. This is overwhelming. There's a lot of applications um, to go through. I'm not gonna go through all of these. I'm going to prioritize the vehicle apps. So you can toggle that filter immediately by pressing right there. Then you can actually search within the apps, which is awesome. Very, very nifty. But let's just take a quick look at everything here, shall we? BMW ID. So this is what you'll actually see when you first like get into the car for the first time. It'll ask you to either assign into your ID or you know change it or whatever. Um, you can create it. So I created one just to see how it works. And that's what you can actually use to transfer settings and such between BMWs. And then mobile devices. This is where my phone is and my friend's phone. We tried using CarPlay, Android Auto, all wireless, all standard on the BMW and you can configure with checkboxes which things you want which phones to do of course connecting a new device and then even settings therein so super easy there go back to personal assistant this is the BMW assistant so example commands like sound main menu calls um, you can also say more bass and it'll pump up the bass um, there's more tips on how to use it and then let's see wake word so, oh yeah, you could use like the Siri one and such. And BMW assistance. Okay, so you can call BMW customer support there. Owner's manual, personal assistant, that, yeah. That's cool, you can see all sorts of commands and learn how to use it best. So, like that a lot. Um, by the way, you can to use the touchscreen like I am, or you can use this wheel down here, which may actually be off camera. I'll show you a clip of that. But you can basically swipe between by scrolling and then you can knock the wheel left or right to go between bigger sections and then scroll there. So that's pretty nifty. Suggestions, habits. So apparently there's like automation and stuff you can do within this. It's interesting. And then settings. So personal assistant settings you can adjust the wake word and use you can even use a personal one like um, 
I don't know. See how that works. Set your personal wake word. Set. Okay. Please tell me the wake word that you want to use to start voice control in the future. What up, I4? Super. I've saved my personal wake word. <laughs> okay, so apparently that should now work, which is awesome. Um, and you can even change the response length from standard or short. So I guess you can make your AI talk more or less. So, see how that works. What up, I4? Tell me the weather. Currently it is sunny in Arvada with a temperature of 66 degrees. I like how she read what is not the current temperature. Um, they might be using different systems. That's kind of funny. So yeah, no visual thing on here. The visual actually popped up on the heads up display, which you can't see for the wake word. Um, the kind of amoeba thing that BMW uses. So a lot of stuff in there. You can of course unselect categories. So that's your personal assistant. Let's go back to the menu. Keep going. Charging, this is a great section. This episode is proudly brought to you by Magna. Magna is a mobility technology company that is super unique because they touch every aspect of almost every car on the market, especially a lot of electric vehicles, and they pr even can produce vehicles from the ground up. Now, you may remember I shot a series just recently testing some of their new electric vehicle powertrains, so stay tuned for a lot of Magna content to come. We're going to be going in-depth with some really interesting topics with these guys, and Out of Spec wants to thank Magna for sponsoring this review and tons of other videos to come right here on Out of Spec. We look forward to working with Magna to define and find out what the future of mobility looks like. So you can charge immediately or schedule a charge out, which is useful, for example, in Texas where I lived before here. My electricity was free during the weekends. So you could tell your car to charge only during the weekends or stuff like that. Um, and then preconditioning for departure, you can have a departure plan and set your car to be ready to depart, like let's say when you go to work. Preconditioning is an interesting term because we usually use that in the EV nerd world of preconditioning the battery pack to get it to the optimal temperature for charging. In this case, they're talking about preconditioning humans to be optimal temperature for commuting. So the car will precondition for us. <laughs> which is awesome but I think the car also preconditions for it going to charging uh, DC fast charging so the AC limit then uh, 48 amps is the highest you can also here I'll use a scroll wheel to get my hand out of the way for you rotate or swipe or rotate all the way down to 6 amps so wide range variety there and then charging target another huge variety you can do 100% which is not recommended unless you're doing a really long road trip or you can do all the way, oh, it tells you, charges the fastest up to 80. So it's telling us the curve drops at 80 pretty significantly. Um, and then you can set it all the way down to 20%. I don't know why you would have a charging limit at 20. That's crazy, but I'll leave it at 100 because I'm gonna do a charging test after this. Unlock the charging cable. Fan loudness, this is such a cool thing right here. Um, you can basically have it automatic or you can put it to restricted. What that means is when you are charging, let's say in your garage, and let's say you're working in your garage on a project or something, you need your car to charge, but you also need to work. The fans of the cooling of the car are distracting you. You can restrict it. And then your charging time will be increased because the car will basically take less power, whatever it takes to keep the fans down, to keep the temperature down, to cool it off less. So that's fascinating. I don't think I've ever seen that in a car. Live vehicle. This is what we saw earlier in the home menu. What, the, what had a widget, its own widget. Um, so you can see tire pressure monitor, services, stuff like that. Picture search, what is this? Front lights, general information, safety, headlight, glass. Wow, they have so much information charging from the power grid charge current wow there's so much this is all within the owner's manual basically so you can do a lot of reading in your bmw if you'd like to wow there's so much here that's crazy oh jacking points that's super nifty look at that hopefully your jacks 
strong enough. This car weighs over 5,000 pounds. And then system settings right here. So you can adjust iDrive stuff such as um, date and time, language, personal assistant, which is what we saw earlier. It's like another shortcut to get to that section. Time period for trip data, units, sound. Let's jump in here really quick. So this has the premium Harman Kardon sound system. It's supposed to be very surround immersive. They use Logic 7 decoding for their surround sound and you can adjust the surround intensity. I like it in the middle or the lowest or the highest for different songs. I never really liked it in two or three or two or four settings, but I just leave it in the middle for most. Experience the sound. This is cool. Check this out. <laughs> I don't want any sort of like copyright infringement, so we're gonna get, get out of that. But it does this whole demo on the sound system. Super, super cool that they do that. And then you can adjust treble and bass here really quickly, balance and fader, or you can go into the deep seven um, band EQ and adjust various frequencies. I find this to be my favorite if you want to, I guess, copy it and then start from there. You can also adjust, once you've adjusted where they are, um, use this to fine tune the bass and treble as a whole. So what that's doing is what's back in the previous screen up here. So that's pretty awesome. Um, yeah, volume settings for different, like driving different speeds. Um, yep, audio confirmation for touchpad and touchscreen. So that's pretty sweet, touchpad itself character input so if you are on a screen that requires typing you can actually swipe on the touchpad to draw the character takes a bit but it's possible map audio confirmation pop-ups these are just pop-ups that can show up when you're doing stuff I guess notifications always the fun <laughs> uh, you can tell you tell the car what notifications you want or don't want I'm gonna turn off Sirius XM content um, notification at the end of the trip, that's pretty cool. And then suggestions, got it. And then getting started, so when you first get your car, try to get all these check marks, data privacy. You can say what to do with your privacy, that's checked, personal assistant. Agree to services, uh, skip. Continue with restrictions. Hey, everything's checked. So we just completed getting started. There's also software upgrade, which I just checked. It's already up to date. So this is installed version 03 slash 2022.45. If anyone's wondering the timestamp of this, um, this is Cinco de Mayo 2022. That's when I am reviewing iDrive. Valet parking mode, do not disturb. Wireless charging tray, you can basically set a reminder to don't forget your phone in the wireless charging tray, which I don't think the wireless charging tray is that good, honestly. Um, charge is fine, it's just Qi charging, a lot of phones support that, but the phones get warm typically, and there's no ventilation down there at all. Um, yep, that's about it for that. Let's jump to interior lighting. Now, this is no Mercedes, but BMW has solid interior lighting. You can turn it off and on, just like that, or adjust the color, a lot of great colors with great names showtime yellow quiet time white sunset drive orange or electrifying blue which i tend to like it matches the blue accents around the interior brightness level reduced for night driving dynamic light so climate control <clears throat> let's talk climate shall we back in the home screen you'll notice that you'll see the climate here the climate used to be down here below the vents in physical button form now with iDrive, BMW cut the buttons in half and made it cleaner, of course, but that also means you no longer have dedicated climate control buttons other than max defrost, which are right here. And I don't know how I feel about that. Some people prefer the physical buttons because they want the muscle memory of, oh, I need to change this while I'm driving. I'll just hit the button there and go for it. But, um, I could see why you'd add it on the screen. You have a bit more options. You're not limited to the number of buttons and you could always update in the future with over the air updates. So these always stay no matter what is on the screen. If you have CarPlay enabled, these will still be down here. It's just a very thin, wide, beautiful high definition CarPlay. You can adjust the temperature on the fly really quickly and you can also climate menu 
see more of it. I have it in automatic program right now, which basically is their AI climate, as they call it, something like that, um, where you can say low or medium or high for the heated seats, or same with the automatic climate vents, and then balanced or dynamic for the actual airflow and where it goes on you. Or if you turn off auto, then those all become numbers and like things you can finitely adjust. So I'll do that for now because I don't know why the fan was blowing so hard earlier. It's like perfect temperature in here. Bit strange. Um, anyways, over here on fresh air, you can do fresh air, automatic air circulation, or recirculation. And then settings. So you can adjust the temperature. Uh, yeah, adjust upper body temperature a little bit separately. So that's kind of cool if you tend to run a bit warmer up top or down below. And preconditioning. So you can set departure plans, which we saw earlier, and then rear climate control, you can adjust from here. With the climate control automatic function, it does use like the sun intensity and the internal and external temperatures to find a balance. So I am not in the sun at all. So yeah, again, I don't know why the fan was on so strongly earlier. But let's go back. Um, we've explored climate pretty thoroughly now. Displays. So we'll start with the main display because that's what the camera is focused on right now. I'll show you the driver display in a minute here. But the heads up display, um, you can adjust that in front of the driver. It's fairly minimal, doesn't show too much, just you know, speed limit and stuff like that. And adjust the height, rotation, brightness, everything like that. And also messages can be shown up there. And then the control display, which is this one, there's really not a whole lot. Everything's inside system settings other than brightness at night, which is pretty cool. So like to have that as an option in the instrument cluster. I'll show you that in a bit, but we can um, basically configure the content itself, what you wanna see on there. And then yeah, speed limit assistance. So you can adjust to the route, adopt manually, show the current limit, I'll do that. Um, Yep, a lot of good things here. Situational distance control. Nice. And windows and doors. So you can lock and unlock. And then do sound, flash, fold on mirrors. I'm gonna do sound off because that beep is really, really, really harsh and loud. So that should help a bit. And then you can fold mirrors, all sorts of things in there. And then comfort access, you can do unlock when approaching or lock when walking away, which is pretty nifty. Um, digital key is where you can set that up. And vehicle key, tailgate, you can adjust the opening heights and the foot movements, which are fairly, fairly reliable, not perfect, but decent. And automatic windows, so you can, yeah, adjust that. And then driving settings. And here we have driver assistance, which is quite a few menus and options. Um, you have forward collision mitigation with different options there. Lane departure warning, active blind spot detection with steering intervention for both those options. Side collision warning, um, fatigue alert, speed warning, stuff like that. Parking and maneuvering, you can sound off a parking space that's detected so you can do the whole automatic park thing. And then, yeah. Pretty, pretty sweet. Driving, speed limit assistance. It's one thing that annoys me actually, I'll point this out. If I just wanted to swipe through this and still see the screen over there, it doesn't. It's like, oh, this is the active thing. You want this now in the main spot. That does get on my nerves a bit. Feedback via steering wheel. Yeah, low intensity, do that. Drive chain. So here you can instantly, so some of these have like stuff on top of the widget. So you can instantly change lane departure warning. Same with Iconic Sounds. Iconic Sounds is the partnership result of being BMW going to Hans Zimmer and saying, make us some music, I guess you'd call it music, or sounds for the electric driving experience, which they call Iconic Sounds. So basically, yeah, Hans Zimmer was commissioned to make sounds for your BMW actually sounds pretty cool doesn't bother me some cars take the route of oh it's uh, you know emulating engine or something this is just like a unique thinking out of the box idea from BMW to do it this way and then charging which is stuff we saw all earlier so you can just instantly unlock the charging cable from right there 
Lastly, on the vehicle apps, we have exterior lighting, which we can adjust turn signal, daytime running lights, door handle lights, welcome light carpet, and pathway lighting, which looks really cool at night. You can go all the way to 240 yep, seconds, so four minutes of that. I'll just do 30 seconds. That's all the vehicle apps, basically. I will quickly show you all apps. We're not gonna go through most of these because you can always download more apps and there's just so many to choose from. You can again search within them here um, if they support that, but there's Android Auto, Apple CarPlay, FM Radio, Spotify, Telephone Navigation, Sirius XM, Podcast News, BMW Shop, and then Messages, yep, Park Mobile, they have some partnership with there. Uneven Road Surface, this will basically warn about potholes supposedly i don't know how reliable this is or where the data is fed in but that's an app on there and yeah that's the personal hotspot i guess is an option but that's that's everything i mean that's everything within the main screen so a lot of functionality in here again you can use the touch or i think you can option gesture controls which I don't think this has optioned. No, it does not. Um, or the scroll wheel down here, or even the BMW Assistant. So a lot of ways to interact with it. Um, and then there's like steering wheel controls for additional things, mostly for volume and adjusting the driver's display. So let's take a look at the driver's display. So yeah, this is the driver's display and you can see the graphics basically. And if you hit the button on the steering wheel, you can adjust basically what you want to adjust. So layout, first of all, this is kind of the wide angled layout, and then you can do a narrower one with a bit more on the left and right, or let's see, oh, the other one is simplified. So it's just like the speedometer on the left and then just your main data on the right. For display purposes, I'll leave it on this one here. And then you can adjust the content. So media, if it was active, or your map, which is just kind of a more compact view guidance for the route and then vehicle kind of assisted view for safety systems and your trip situation or just super simple um, speed so very simple on that screen there's not a whole lot you can actually adjust beyond that it's just ready to go and then last but not least is the heads up display so i can go to head up and then do reduced view or swipe up and do directional view, standard view. That's pretty much it. Um, yeah, not a whole lot you can adjust with that. It just kind of depends what you want it to do. So I'm gonna go back to standard view. And then you can adjust things like, I think if I just swipe the scroll wheel and the steering wheel, yeah, you can adjust like your media and radio. It'll pop messages up on the heads up display. So Decent information, nothing too crazy, which is good because you don't want to be too distracted looking at that even though it is through your windshield. So that's pretty much it for the BMW iDrive 8 Deep Dive. It's a great system. We'll keep you posted on things as they kind of change because we hope to just keep driving more BMWs. And like so many other cars nowadays, they get software updates, which can improve the system dramatically or even make things worse sometimes looking at you, Tesla. Uh, anyways, thanks for watching. Um, let us know what other infotainment systems you want to get instructionals on because I think they're fascinating. They're all different and that could help you in your car shopping. I mean, on one hand, every car just kind of drives. And if you're like a super techie, you might be really interested in the infotainment and that could make or break your car decision. So thanks for watching. See you in another one very soon.